Oh, there's the pool noodles. <laughs> ah. <laughs> She's trying to get you to come in. Mm hmm. Come with me, Kate. Come with me. We'll have all kinds of adventures. <laughs> Are we ready? Anytime. All right. I'll start the clock when you get the gate hey. shut. There. Right. Saddle. Linda, listen. Jeez. Hey. We talked about this yesterday. Hey. Cade Mills, 45 minutes starting now. Okay. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who've seen my friend Dixie here, this is par for the course. Now, catching her is not the problem, and I kind of am going to anticipate this is going to happen for us, so my plan here is to, when I catch her, I want her to be in a good frame of mind. I don't want her to just run over top of me and then me step out of her way and catch her. I'm going to keep pushing her off this gate till she can be kind and soft, and then I'll allow her to come to me. It's kind of the opposite of most problems with horses where they're scared of you. She's a lot of things, but scared of me ain't one of them. Oh, you are letting out some stuff there. You all right? You good? You all right? I don't know how to give a horse a Heimlich, so. All right, so our goal here today is gonna be taking that out again. We worked on that there yesterday. <clears throat> With her, my sessions have really consisted of trying to bring this horse back to where she was. Um, every session, I feel like we end in a really good place and then she comes out and she gets a little scatterbrained and then I kinda gotta talk her back into being my buddy and having some focus, so. It's been working really well. Sometimes it takes longer than others, but I do eventually get her and I want to continue with that pattern because one of the hardest things to do in the finals is we've done all this preparation in here and we have to take her to a different arena and they're going to walk them across the road and they're not going to be in them stalls. So it's going to add some energy to the situation. And um, I've been putting these patterns in her to kind of talk her into leaning on me has been my biggest focus. You know, if you're kind of spiraling out of control in your head, lean on me. So when we get to the finals, I'm hoping that same pattern's going to ring true and she remembers some of this stuff. See how much better that is? Woosah. There. And, you know, in, in the midst of all this stuff, even when she's a little pushy or she's a little nervy, you watch when I grab a hold of her, her respect or her understanding and her willingness to be soft and, and to be workable has maintained through all of that. So she can be tough in certain areas, but there is certain areas to where she is, she's really let me do what I need to do. So I got to give her credit on that. The gate has <laughs> been a bit of a problem for both of us right there. Ah, maybe I can just go out. No, not today. Now, when I grab the saddle, if you guys seen her yesterday, she is, has a hard time standing still, period, but also with the saddle as well. So when she walks off, today I'm going to have a little more discipline for that and keep up in the motivation for her to hand, stand still. And just for, keep reminding her, it's easier to stand still than it is to move. There, you see that one step forward. I'm really going to try to instill this pattern before I get going. Now, usually the session before the finals, our fear is going to be the riding, you know, how is she going to take the riding, how is she going to take the energy. With this mare, I think the riding portion of it, I feel pretty confident with her. I think I can turn her, eh, stop, still a bit of a suggestion, but I think she's fairly open to that suggestion. So a lot of it is going to be getting her brain together and making sure I have some patterns that will help her through that hard situation. But the riding has gone pretty well, I think. I had a good friend bring me a curry comb. I couldn't find mine. Thank you, Laura. It's working great. It's nice and broke in, too, the way I like them. Saved me 10 minutes in the brushing category. I thought for sure it was in the bottom of that bag I got, and I got here, I'm like, uh-oh. Now, 
when I'm brushing her here, I'm going to work on feet today. But you can see me going down her legs. She's not going to love that curry comb down her leg, so I'm a little softer with it. But I do want to kind of see how she's going to handle that. To be honest with you, she's been pretty good about picking up her feet. I didn't feel like there was a big problem in there. If she would stop moving them, I could pick them up. No problem. There, just that move is going to initiate a backup. Remind her to stand still. And I'm going to continue that pattern when I grab the saddle, so this is a good place to start. And it's hard in this situation because when she moves, we feel like we should just say no or whoa is another common one people use. But if it's one step, it's got to be the same as if it's five steps. Right there. Now, I probably won't get her all the way through this, and I'm just going to keep making her better, and if she gives in, great. But I don't need to get it all today. What I need to do is keep creating that pattern to make her better. A horse will only give you what they can in a session, so it's important to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. It's my mom. <laughs> Don't you bite me. She hasn't really offered to bite, but I wouldn't say she wouldn't bite. Good girl. And if you guys have been watching along, for those of you who've been here since Friday and got to see the whole thing, that right there, just her standing a little better, it is getting better all the time. And I have to remind myself, even though there's a clock and a bunch of people staring at you and all this stuff going on, I still need to recognize when this horse is getting better. And right there, she's better. Finished? No. Better? You bet. Okay, saddling again, we're going to use that same pattern I just used. If you walk off while I have saddling you, I'm going to back you up. You might have to do a few laps here, but we'll get her ironed out. See how as soon as I let go, she stepped ahead. Now, if I want her to stand still... But as soon as I let go with the discipline, which in this case is the backup, her first response is to go forward, I'd be foolish to think that it worked. But there, backed up, she stood still, all right, I can move along. So if you guys are going to try this with your horses, if you back them up and you want them to stand still, and as soon as you let go, they jump ahead, go again until when you let go, they don't jump ahead. It's a bit of a balancing act here. You want to make sure the saddle doesn't hit the ground. There, we got a good lick and chew. For a lot of years when I was starting colts for a living, the first saddling, uh, I had kind of an older, real comfortable saddle I used on Colts, but for the first couple of saddlings, I always made sure I used my wife's saddle. I've saddled a few Colts in a barrel saddle before. <laughs> now we talked a little bit about yesterday, about that nose rooting in her head. Now, walking off, uh, I can understand why she's doing it. I can appreciate she's having a hard time, but flicking that head at me and kind of rooting the nose away from me, that's going to start upping the ante here a little bit with her because 
it's rude. It's one thing to make a mistake, and no one's ever going to get after a horse for making a mistake. We all make them. But being rude is something that can never be allowed. Hey. Attention. Please don't bite me. Out here, you got me at a disadvantage, Dixie. Now, I'm sure there's a few people that have been in the crowd that are thinking, just tie her up. <laughs> Saddle her tied. What are you doing? And that may have crossed my mind, may have not crossed my mind, but the thought process there would be wrong, right? Because there's a problem in here that needs to be fixed. And are we horse training or are we just finding the easiest way to get what we want? I want her to get over whatever issue she's struggling with. If I tied her up, it's a great way to hide it. So if I had this horse in training, this would be our conversation. Three, four days, probably would be done. But I darn sure wouldn't move on until I had some success with it. Because I don't want it to be there when she's seven, eight, nine years old and people say, ah, oh, she's, she's just always been like that. Tie her up. Chase her around for a little while at the trailer. She'll be fine. No more growling at me. Good girl, Dixie. Now, I've talked a few times about how we're trying to accomplish two things at once and how, you know, you never have as much time with a colt as you would like. So if you guys watched my session yesterday, stop is going to be our biggest problem. So right now, I'm using this backup to discipline her, but I'm also using the backup because it's her weakest point. So I'm hoping to help better her back up while I'm help bettering her to be saddled. Kind of a twofer, if you will. I have to do a few things on the move here, Dixie. There. Getting sick of backing up? No, I don't think she is. Hey, don't knock the hat off. It's another thing we are not on, or another thing that's absolutely unacceptable. Lone clapper there, I appreciate those. Don't feel silly. Now, if she's leaning there, I'm building my pressure. I got to make sure she's moving off of that. So if you see me having to tap on her, I'm really hoping you guys are seeing the build. You're not just seeing the last one. Um, I'm not tapping her because I'm mad at her. That build of pressure is the reason I'm, I'm tapping on her a little harder is I ask and I can feel her just running into this left hand. As soon as she moves off of it, my pressure will go back to a one every time. There. You know, as much as she, she has her, her problems where her mind's going a million miles an hour, one thing you really notice in this colt, and I've liked since day one, especially when I, the first day when I picked her, is she sure licks and chews a lot. And while I got a minute here, I'll give you guys my theory on that. And there is a lot of them. I feel like when they lick and chew, they release tension. And I think it's the best way I can describe it. It's like if you were driving on really bad roads, and you come out of the canyon, and the roads bear up, or they just ice the roads, and you can finally just relax. Your whole body just goes, 
And I think that's what she does when she licks and chews. I feel like she's holding on to that tension, like, I don't want to stand still. I don't want to back up. I don't want to do what you're asking. And then she finally just goes, fine. Some people talk about the learning side of it, like I taught her something. I don't think that's necessarily the case because I've watched them lick and chew and then do it wrong. So tension, that's, the way I, that's what I think happens in there. All right, we're buttoned up. 30 laps, we're ready to rock. Half an hour to go, 30 minutes left. 30 laps, 30 minutes, thank you. Her bend has been awesome. I'm super proud of her there. Even though she does get a little grumpy in her face, she does try really hard to stay soft for me, and you gotta give her that. <laughs> you can see her thinking a mile away, huh? Oh, I just wanna run off. So the one thing we haven't got to do yet is the tarp, and I really wanted to show her this, and it's been my experience that if you can get a horse over the tarp, what pattern you use is gonna help you through everything else. So the bridge was pretty straightforward, but <laughs> especially a white tarp, if you guys have ever worked with tarps very much, you know that one's gonna be the harder. I feel like if I can get her over the tarp, I can get her over everything, and we never have the time to do every single obstacle that's be in the finals. If she'll do that, makes me feel better. Go ahead, clap, thank you. <laughs> she has this crowd trained to tender clap for her. Hey? And this is, you know, uh, I said I picked her because my daughter picked her, which was definitely part of it. They usually got a pretty good eye, even though she's six. But I also liked, this mare looked like she was bold, and she looked like she was a good size, and I felt like she was gonna have a little more forward motion. She didn't look too soggy. Uh, I definitely got more than I bargained for there. But bold in a situation like this, when you're picking a horse for a trainer challenge, I really try to pick one that I feel like can do the deal. Um, I would never pick a Gypsy Vanner to be a barrel horse, no more than I would pick a timid horse to go on a trainer challenge. It's just a lot to put on them and it kind of leaves you to disadvantage. So when I see one like her that looks pretty bold in the, in the start, I always feel like that's a good pick. Bit off a little more than I needed to chew on you, but we're getting there. Good. Okay, we need to get our saddle buttoned up a little bit and then we can talk about dragging something and swinging a log. She did not move. I just tightened my cinch and she didn't move. Thank you. Run off if you want, I don't care, we got something. I feel good about it. Okay, so when, I, when I'm gonna start introducing things like the rope, and most of the time you swing a rope till they quit moving their feet. We're gonna have to take what we can get with old Dixie, so I think I can get her to stop moving her feet, but my biggest focus, I know there's a ton of things in here. Uh, no, no, that ain't gonna work. My biggest focus is gonna be making sure she accepts the rope. Not just that she stops moving her feet. We might be in motion in the finals here this afternoon. When we, yeah, no, again, not acceptable. And that's fine. Just as long as I feel like she's comfortable with it, I feel like I've done her a good service in making sure she's ready. All right. She was pretty good about this in the beginning, but we've, we've, been a lot, we've had a lot of stuff going on since, so a good double check here is never gonna be a bad idea. She's not moving. Any of you see that coming? <laughs> Thank you. Gosh. If I would have known, all I had to do was swing a rope to get her to stop. Man, we could have took a shortcut, Dixie. Look at her. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I'm going to rope her before I saddle her in the finals. You're going to get saddled with a rope on. wonder if I can swing a rope and throw a saddle at the same time. I might be practicing that here before we go. Good job, sweetie. Look at that. I'm hoping you're finding some peace. I might just sit here and enjoy that for a minute. Thank you. You're clapping and she's not moving? Who are you? Oh, there, she's back. She's back. 
Good girl. Just soak it in. Take a little piece, eh? I want to really get her to see it out of both eyes, really let her feel or uh, hear the rope feeding in and out of my hand. But that's pretty sweet. Thank you. Plus five. Good job. Just when you start thinking you get one figured out, eh? That's why people say, like, don't you ever get just sick of riding horses every day? Maybe if I rode the same horse, yeah, I'd get sick of it. But every now and again, you meet a Dixie, and you're like, gosh, I can't wait to see what the next one's like. And we've done quite a few trainer challenges, but I can't think of two horses that were the same. All right, we need to drag a log. Let's get that ironed out, sweetie. Well, that's probably not going to work tying it in the middle. Ought to work. Okay, so the log's going to be on the right-hand side of her. And she hates when I'm over there, but let's iron that out too. Quit. I'm going to start by showing it to her. Might need to shorten that up a piece. There we go. She don't look too bothered. Now, any of you have ever been to a branding or drug a calf on a horse or a log? It all goes pretty good till the rope touches her, right? And if somebody gets bucked off at a branding, which is every single year, I'm always watching for it. Someone's going to have it happen. It's always when that calf jumps underneath that horse, right? And it's always that colt they had going really good last year, and they hadn't rode it once since last year, and they're like, oh, he'll be fine. I'm going to try to set it up there to where it touches her. Thank you. And this is a, a very good testament to what type of horse this is. And I was talking to some people about her the other day, I guess yesterday after our sessions. She is going to be a horse that is not made for somebody to not ride. But if you put her to work, this one, this horse shines. Like it'll be, uh, can you imagine trying to have to, or having to keep up with her if you were on a different horse? You'd want this one. So you got a big job to do in a day, I'd grab this mare and we talked about how mares have got a little more in them than geldings. She's a great testament to that. Okay. Now, I have been in a few trainer challenges to where these poles get me. And you never give them any credit. You're like, well, of course a horse can go over a pole, right? I wanted to double check because sometimes in white poles on the ground, they look at them and just refuse them. Of course, she's just going to do it. Run of the mill day for Dixie. Good girl. Now, the last thing I need to fix in my groundwork before I get on, if you guys have noticed, I'm not in a terrible hurry to get on this animal. I feel like everything we've done in the saddle has been kind of the easy stuff, or the stuff that was more comfortable for her. What I need to accomplish before I get to the finals is I've got to create some comfort with me stepping in the saddle. Now, the pattern I used in the brushing today and in the saddling today was when she would walk off, I'd back her up. So I want to spend some time with her here, and we've hung in the stirrup, and we, you know, we've kind of all, uh, tried all the traditional things that have worked. I really wanted to go back to a pattern that I'd instilled in her today and try to give her the best chance. Now, she might not stand still to get on the finals, but this will darn sure give us a better chance. So right there, she's already moving. Hey. Hey. Now... If I felt like a cheater, I'd just put a rope on her and she wouldn't move. But we'll get her through it. 
All right, Darla. Holy bananas. I didn't see that coming. Good job. <laughs> Instead of just crawling on her right there, heck, I'm going to take it. Good job, Dixie. This is the, uh, the funnest part of horse training outside of trainer challenges. It's fun here too, but when you have a great ride on a horse and it's Wednesday, Thursday is the best day to go to work. You lay in bed Wednesday night and you're like, gosh, that horse did so good. I cannot wait to see what she does tomorrow. Like, I think we finally got through to her. That feeling keeps a guy going back to work, that's for sure. And that's what you hope your clients find when they ride them too. You know, if they take a clinic and it goes well, you're hoping they're like, gosh, I can't wait to do that again. I want to go try my horse the next day. Same deal, sweetie. Knew it wasn't going to be that easy. No, we're going to stay here. Hey. Hey, don't lean, darling. How much time I got left, you? 18 and a half minutes. Wow. Lots of time. That's awesome. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> Better than the rest. Now, if I was a little further along in the backup, I would have grabbed a hold of her right there. We've got a little burr underneath her here. Mm. Um, but I feel like to pick that fight with the backup right there when she's so green in the backup, she's pretty good on the ground, but to just grab a hold of her and start pulling on a young horse straight back when you first step on them, especially if they're a little tight, it's gonna cause you more grief than you need. So I'm just gonna finish my pattern with her here. Yeah, let it out. By moving her till she stands still, at least for a second, and just try to hammer home what we've been talking about. I know, yeah, pawn, whatever. Got to do what you got to do out here. He'll can't allow it, though. Watch him noodles. We're going to get a lot of forward if she hip checks him noodles, eh? No, ma'am. Now, you want to wanna iron out that step on, but I just feel like she's had enough of that in the belly right now that I'm taking kind of the mentality of, Better is better. She was better today than she was yesterday, and she was better yesterday than she was the day before. So I feel like if that keeps going, we'll be good. I don't want to keep jumping on her and making her sore. You can see she's already kind of pawing. She's, she's uh, at the end of her rope here with some of that stuff. So I want to use what I got here. And she loves to go, so why not go for a ride? That sounds like more fun than jumping in the stirrup. No. No biteies. We gotta find some, some kind of woe down here before I let her go though. One for you, one for me. Oh, sorry, I said that wrong. First it's one for me, then I'll do one for you. No ma'am. Yeah, Shoulders look really good when I'm asking for hips. Nope. Good girl. Yeah. There. A little chewing, away she goes, eh? All right. Let's go do one for you. Go walk around and blow off some steam, you cranky little fussy britches. 
Oh, that's a great thing to start off with when you're tight. Just get right in the middle of that tarp. That'll make you hunker down a step. All right. Here we go. Oh, there we don't. All right, good. You don't want her to go on the tarp right now, but you can't weaken. Try to act like I'm not scared right there so she don't feel it. Otherwise, she'll start threatening me with the tarp, like, oh, I'm going to go over there. Howdy. Anything you want to know, uh, getting deeper into what's going on with these colts, well, if you're interested in them and might even want to bid on them, well, just talk to the the uh, guy that's riding them, and they can give you all the yeah. information, things you might like to, to know uh, if you wind up taking them home. Well, and it's, I'll just tell you guys the question that was asked, and it, while she's kind of cooling out here, it might be a good thing to expand on. It's a good question. So he said if you, every time she takes a step forward and she goes back, I back her up, sorry. So what if she wants to walk off, but instead she backs up? Now, in that situation, all she's doing is anticipating the discipline. So first thing I take from that is she clearly understands right from wrong. Because if she's about to walk off and she knows it's wrong and she knows I'm going to back her up every time she does it, she's not in the best frame of mind because she's already doing the discipline before she makes the mistake. So this mare is trying to be two and three steps ahead of me. Now, that's kind of the telling me where I'm at. Now, how I fix that is I would just continue my pattern to where, and this is where it's really important to draw a firm line in the sand of what you're doing. It wasn't walking off that I wasn't happy with. It was moving her feet. I chose backup. So if she backs up, I'm not going to change my pattern. I'd back her up again. And then I'd back her up again and back her up again, and I would keep that same pattern, whether she went sideways, forwards, around, or whatever. Uh, good question there. And just make sure you keep a read on your horse, because one thing that... You know, people say, well, this guy's hard on horses or this guy's too easy on horses. And there, there really is no fine line to suit everybody. What I always think about is when I apply pressure to an animal or when I feel like it's time for this horse to move along is I feel like that horse understands right from wrong. Then I know I can move along. But if I feel like I'm being hard on her and she has no idea what I'm talking about, that's not fair. So that's a good way for right there. I'd know, hey, she knows right from wrong. It's time to start expecting a little more out of her. And if you're bright enough to be able to predict me three moves ahead, you're bright enough to get it right. Like, let's go. It's time to move along. So that would be my take on that one. Thank you. <laughs> Lope to the right. Oh, I hope the video cameras are running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <sighs> Who saw that coming? Oh, hey. Nice work there, Cade. Oh. Thank you. You can always tell the Cowboys, because every judge right now is smiling. <laughs> yeah, what Been a we <laughs> Wee-haw. <Yeah. Well>. <laughs> you could just see it building, eh? It just coming well. and coming and... Gosh almighty, where did that come from? Yeah. I broke another mic. Oh, we can still hear you. Good. I'm, I'm glad I didn't slip up when you could yeah. still hear me and say something I shouldn't say. Because I was thinking things. Oh, she let it out. That's why she had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Now, all... let's address the problem. First off, I didn't move her out as much as I could have when I got on her. And that might have been a good idea. The other side is, it's anger. And I, I truly believe that she's getting madder and madder and madder, and it's starting to get to where it's not fear. Absolutely, not fear. It's So there, when she tried to scatter me around here like a yard sale, her plan was, you know what, I've had enough of you. Here, give me some of that and let me have it, eh? I enjoyed the forward, it was the up and down that I didn't care for. So, <laughs> thank you. The best thing I can do right now, thank you, is we are gonna recreate that until I can't find it. And believe me, I don't want to. 
but I ain't leaving this in an animal and then going to the big arena. I'll be pacing out back like a crazy person. Uh, let's find some common ground there. Fussy Britches, that's your new name. <laughs> you ain't nice enough to be a Dixie. I've met some nice ladies named Dixie. Yeah, you wish. I've been letting you get away with one circle a day. Not no more. So if you want to start Colts by yourself, be prepared for all of this stuff. You know, it's funny that people send me their resume and want to come work for me, and I read it, but there's one question I need to ask every single one of them. Are you willing to get bucked off? Because if you're not, I'm not saying you're going to, but if you ain't willing to get bucked off, quit. Because I got bucked off a hundred times before I learned how to not get bucked off, and I still get bucked off five times a year. Can't be a football player and complain about getting hit. Exactly. Thank you. That's a good analogy. You got it in you. I'm ready for you now, buddy. You ain't going to catch me off guard again. You better think about where you're going to put them feet. Because if we go down, you're going down first. I've never made a bronc ride at a <laughs> trainer challenge before. Well... There was that one at Douglas Lakes that had me almost bucked off when he quit. Must be getting somewhere, I guess. Even saw one of those uh, Douglas Lake horses buck off the great Doug Mills <laughs> in a challenge years ago. And yeah, he, he had me. I dropped my halter shank. I had my... One leg over the horn, I didn't have any stirrups, he was dragging the rope, and then he just stopped and started shaking. All I had was the horn. I just kind of slid off side saddle. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Let's be friends. That was one of the coolest challenges I ever did, though. That horse was, he was pretty awesome. Now, just to get back to the training side of things, now that you guys saw your crash and nobody got hurt, She's gate sour now, right? So that's what I'm dealing with in the midst of all these obstacles. So the exact same thing I did when she was gate sour at the start is I'm gonna cruise around and every time she gets that panel, I'm gonna speed her up. And I'm gonna start creating that same pattern here all over again and we're hoping it helps us in the finals. That will be enough of that. Oh, I got my mic all tangled up. These mic people ain't going to let me use one anymore. Now, the reason I went to the whip is because she's getting sticky on my leg. And I'm going to start adding some speed here in these hips. And I want her to feel a change in me. I don't want it to come out of nowhere. But she needs to realize, again, we talked yesterday about unacceptable. That right there is like the unacceptable. <laughs> If you're confused about what you're allowed to do, let's start off at the base point. Don't ever do that again. So if I even see a piece of it, she is going to get some, uh, some different cade. And she's not moving. Still not moving. Oh. Well, if that's all it took, why didn't you just do that on Friday? We could have been having way more fun. Sorry, I'm breathing this mic all I hear is, sounds like the last scene in Jaws when everyone <laughs> huddled over that boat. Now again, back to that same pattern. I don't want her to feel like I'm holding the grudge. You know, whatever. Whatever happened, happened. But I want to end the day. I don't want her thinking I'm mad at her. I want her realizing that, all right, that ain't going to work. How am I going to please them? Not... Gosh, I made him plumb mad. I hope I never see him again. Here comes the heat. Thank you. Go ahead, clap. Don't worry. If you pick 
the lead, it'd be a lot easier on both of us, honey. <clears throat> oh, good girl. You guys want to hear a funny story when everyone's talking about papers? I got a good story for this. So last weekend, I drew a horse that had Hancock on its papers, and the other ones didn't, right? Every person comes up to my booth, oh, you drew a Hancock. Gosh, you're in trouble. What are you going to do? Sucker never bucked. <laughs> Every other horse here has Hancock on her papers. She don't. And man, did she give them Hancocks a run for their money. <laughs> so quit giving them Hancocks a bad name because they all got some of it. <laughs> well, I hope you're going to have uh, a video you can put into slow motion and analyze every jump there. <laughs> I hope so, too. I thought about that after, and the video is going to be a lot better. It's not going to be one of them ones on Instagram that goes, oh, no, oh, no, <laughs> and have me coming off the side of her. Oh, yeah. It's looking so good now. That's a good girl. Thank you. Four and a half minutes to go, Kate. Oh, Four right. and a half. Said we're going to work on stop. Spent yeah. 10 minutes working on not falling off. <laughs> I just imagine how much energy that takes to ride like that. <laughs> oh. Got to give it to her, though. That was some college try. Thank you. Had a girl. There, now we can be friends again. Oh. Yeah, after I blew my second stirrup, I started to panic because she wasn't weakening. <laughs> she was still getting harder. I'm like, I, I'm out of stirrups, honey, so <laughs> you could calm down. That'd be fantastic. Oh. I bet you everybody who came Saturday is gonna be like, shoot. There we go. Wow, that's, that's the deal there, sweetie. She won't stand still. You rope her, you put her on an obstacle. All of a sudden, we got breaks. What did you learn? People say they like their horses to have a lot of try. If you're in the market for one, she's got some try. Hey, sweetie. Two and a half minutes to get her into the best frame of mind possible <laughs> to leave her before the final. You know, after she blew up and started bucking, I did not think I would find that again, so <laughs> I'm happy. Thank you. Uh. Okay. Thank you. But Cade, you know, you're so right, and I've heard it from your dad, too. You just can't leave that buck in there. You can't let her hide that. You know, it's, it's something we talk about when we're customers are looking for new horses or people call and ask for help and ask what we look for. Buck is something that it can be taken out, and if it's not done well, it will resurface. But when it comes to selling horses or homing a horse, especially if you got 60, 90 days, whatever you got it in training, if that horse has any buck at all, it's something that everybody needs to, to be aware of and it's something that it's the no-go. A horse can run off, bolt, rear, whatever, but buck is something that nobody buys a horse to get bucked off. And if you do, I can find you five or six for cheap. But it's something I try to find it as early as I can and I do not move past it until it's gone. With her, she's just a hair crafty about how she hid it from me. But uh, that being said, you know, if you guys are wondering my thought process on that, if she was a true bucker, I'd have found it day one. It's not her thing. I think she just got a little nervous when everyone started clapping, and then she got out there, and she had some anger and a little bit of resentment about everything that's been going on. And I think once she started, she kind of scared herself into more. But I wouldn't label this horse as a horse that's going to continue to buck. Um, 
she darn sure needs a heck of a good start on her, but she's not a bucker. She'd be one that, that would probably be mostly gone by now, and I hate saying that before the finals, I might find it, but I, I'd say she's, that's not her thing. Although you are pretty good at it. 30 seconds to go. Okay. That's it for us, folks. Thanks for watching. See you guys at the finals. Wow. Very entertaining session from Cade Mills. Uh, take a 15-minute break, and Trevor Murdies will be in here.